Hi, I'm Melanie Ann Phillips, co-creator of the Dramatica Theory of Story. In this episode of Beyond Dramatica, as promised, we're back yet again to discuss more information about the central concept of Dramatica called the story mind and the crucial concept called fractal psychology. Now, in the first episode, we defined exactly what fractal psychology was, that it's like nested Russian dolls of psychology. You take a bunch of individuals, you bring them together, and if you get a critical mass of individuals, that that group self-organizes into a psychology that can be read the same way as the psychology of a single human mind, the same structure, the same dynamics, that that larger group will also have fears like we have fears, have goals like we have goals, hate things, love things, operate inside, structurally and dynamically, as if it were a single human mind. And if you take those pseudo-minds and bring enough of them together to create a critical mass, then you can create a larger group, and that larger group automatically self-organizes according to the same psychological principles and will take on the qualities as if it were a single mind as well. We talked about how there's a size of mind constant, which is represented by four levels of going larger and larger. Here in the Dramatica story chart, the t periodic table of story elements, as it were, of Dramatica, we see that down here at the very bottom, we have these very tiny little elements. Those are the individual processes of the mind. And they come together to form a family, and that family is represented by this little gray area here. And four little squares here come together as individuals that are each made up of tinier parts to become part of this larger part over here. And those come together in four to make an even larger area, and ultimately it comes together here. We said that was the size of mind constant because that's as deeply as the human mind can look into the details and still see the big picture items at the same time. In other words, like a railroad car, you can move up and down the scale of detail, but you can never expand it to make it wider or shorter. You can't expand your mind to see a greater bandwidth of detail or contrast ratio, if you will, between the highest and the lowest, the biggest and the smallest, there's only a certain amount the human mind can handle. And why? Because there's four dimensions in our universe, mass, energy, space, and time, and they determine how the brain is formed. They determine how the biology and the neurology work. And what we found in stories were that this same dynamic is transportable into the medium of stories. In fact, it was discovered in stories that in the process of communication from author to audience, the only way that we can actually know that what the person is trying to tell us is what they were actually trying to say and not just what we're inventing is that it's hung on a framework that essentially is this model of the mind, this, this framework here that is the story mind. It becomes the carrier wave on which the information travels from author to audience. It becomes the platter on which content is served up. And like with a carrier wave, once that is transmitted containing the content, the carrier wave is stripped out because our own mind, having exactly the same operating system, filters it out. It hits it one for one, cancels it out, and so does the content then stand alone for us to appreciate for its own value. It shows how to see the content, where it should be placed when we put it on our own minds by showing where it is in the story mind. Now we said that this was a fractal system and it went down those four levels and it wasn't like a Mandelbrot set or a Julian set, it was actually a series of iterative equations because each one of these groups of four here, each group of four is a quad and each quad looks like this and the wire framework is not just a framework, it's actually an iter iterative equation or a nonlinear equation that creates fractal patterns. Now, we spoke last time about how each one of the items in this quad is basically a process seen as an object, just like an object-oriented programming. If you take all the mental processes and turn them into objects like love and hate, hating something, hating it is a process. What you hate, that's part of the storytelling. That's part of your own experience and cultural indoctrination. That you hate, we all have that within us, and these larger groups also have those same feelings within them structurally, dynamically, represented by that chart. So if this is the basic building plot then to take these objects, these processes turned as objects in psychology, and to hold them, it holds them in a position where the position tells us which variable they fill. And now I'm going to go a step forward with this, if I can find my handy dandy pen here, and if not, I'll use the next nearest. I'll use this one. All right. If we want to look at the quad and understand the iterative equation, 
we can say that this quad here has the four aspects of mind in it. Knowledge, thought, ability, and desire. And that can be translated. Remember, this is just a representation. Uh, another representation of Dramatica in the early days so that we could get a look at it was a, a pyramid. Another one was a, a toroid with a Mobius strip wrapping around it four times until it connected with its own tail. Well, they're actually both valid representations mathematically, but this tower was a lot easier to use, so we stuck with that. We're trying to look at something you can't actually see. You have to visualize it. Okay. So, <clears throat> this translates to the equation T over K equals AD. TKAD, we call it for short. Now, what does that actually mean? It's not really saying T divided by K mathematically equals the, the uh, combination of A multiplied by D. That's not what we really mean. What we mean is when one side of the mind divides something, looks at it in discrete particles, the other side blends concepts together. Why? because the blending together creates a yardstick by which we measure the other two items independently against each other. In other words, this is kind of like what holds the scale, and this is kind of like the two sides of the scale that are going to go up and down. Now that's true for every single one of these quads. They all have this form at rest. In this model that we saw here, they all have that form before it's twisted and turned like a Rubik's Cube. They are in exactly the same place, and it's always K in the upper left-hand corner and T down below. And this looks suspiciously like another equation that we've seen before. If you actually multiply each side by K, you end up with T equals KAD. Now, the reason I still put these in multiplying is because they have to be multiplied first before you can add this, because that's what makes it kind of an iterative equation as opposed to just a math equation, is that this operation must be performed before this operation is performed in these variables. And remember, each of these items in here is a mental process in, in this entire chart. There's like, what, 300 some odd processes here? Each one is a mental process, and they're all nested. Now, when we have this equation, T equals KAD, we call that mental relativity. In this form or that form, it's still mental relativity because it's showing how things are balanced and how things are blended. In other words, how things relate. Okay, now let me go to another page to show you this familiar equation. T equals KAD, which is simple math, bears a striking resemblance, and I know I'm going to catch all kinds of flack for this, to E equals MC squared. Okay, now why is that? That's why we call it mental relativity. It's saying that existing in the processes of our minds are the same patterns of relativity that we see outside in the external universe. And why? Because our minds make the patterns with which we see things. So when you look as deeply as you can into any subject, as far as you can into the greatest detail, ultimately you see a mirror. You see your own operating system of your own mind staring back at you. Eventually all the content is stripped out and all you see is your own pattern making capability. And that's why the dynamics of, of patterns, uh, whether it's, it's looking at uh, migrating geese or looking at subnuclear particles, they're all going to see repetitive patterns that begin to look familiar, not because they're the same things, but when we see a spiral in a teacup as we stir it, and we see a spiral in a galaxy, there's no real relationship between the teacup and the galaxy, and the two can't be modeled in order to determine what's going to happen with the other one, except in the broadest sense. What it is is that the data we're observing, the closest pattern that our minds can make to make sense of that data, to be predictive of it and analyze how it works and what the components are, is to see each as a spiral. The common factor is not the spiral. The common factor is us that we make and project the spiral. So using mental relativity in this chart, which then mixes things up like a Rubik's Cube and brings things into different conjunctions, brings us so much more detailed understanding of our own pattern-making um, processes in our own mind that we can apply it to everything from subnuclear physics or quantum theory or astrophysics or biology or, or uh, neurology or psychology or sociology because it's all about how we make patterns and it helps us decide what the best pattern is to understand what we're observing. All right, so here's the thought. C squared 
what we really have is space and time in there, because it's speed, right? I mean, for speed, you need space and time, distance covered and how long it takes to get there. The reason that it looks like a constant is because it's really the wavelength times the frequency. And inside the universe, when wavelength increases, frequency decreases. When frequency increases, wavelength decreases, and so on. And so you end up with a balance here, like a teeter-totter. One goes up, the other goes down. The overall sum between the two is the same, which it looks like you actually have the speed of light times itself, but it's really the speed of light seen spatially times the speed of light seen temporally, and that creates the C squared. Similarly up here, you end up with the same thing. Ability and desire combine into something we all familiarly call desirability. Ability. Well, anyway, desirability, which means that if you end up with ability zero, no matter how much desire you have, there's no desirability. If you have uh, uh, desire at zero, no matter how much ability you have at zero, and vice versa, if I mixed it up, I'm sorry. But what it really means is desirability is at zero if either of these is at zero. But it then creates interesting curves if they have different values, if ability goes up a little bit or desire goes up a lot or down. Collectively between the two, then, that is always going to have that inverse relationship. The only way you can ever see space and time as separate is if you're standing outside the universe looking in. Similarly, the only way you can ever see ability and desire as separate as standing outside and looking into the mind. But that's only true for men. Men blend desire and ability. Women do not. They blend another two of those items, but this is not the time to go into that. What we want to do right now is talk about these iterative equations and the fractal nature, because remember, this is fractal psychology part three. And so, with those equations, think about it for a moment, how complex this really is. Every item in that chart has a name, a semantic name. I don't think I can get them closer where you can actually see the names of the small ones. But the small ones have names like, like inaction, deduction, uh, production, uh, conscience, temptation, all of these things that we take for granted within ourselves. And they had to be arranged so that they could be properly balanced according to not only the equations within each quad, but also the same equations operating from level to level and from side to side of the whole quad. Really complex. The way I want to illustrate that is, over here, I believe I have, meh. Well, if you look here on Universe, you can see at the top, Universe is a fixed situation. And past is to Universe as memory is to mind. If you look at the complete chart, which I wish I had a copy here close for you to see, but if you look close, you'll see past is to Universe as memory is to mind. And you see they're in exactly the same position. Well, similarly, you can look at past is to present. Now we're looking, if I can hold this up here, I don't know if I can do this, diagonally. Past is to present, not going up to universe, but diagonally from past to present. And that is the same as consciousness, oh, psychology, sorry, mind, that is the same as memory is to consciousness. Memory to consciousness. So memory relates to consciousness the same way past does to present. Okay, those are the kinds of relationships you have in this chart that go laterally across and also up and down. And in fact, even from the top of the chart, K-T-A-D. Actually, it's K-T-A-D, the way the chart is set up. It interweaves because they're diagonals. Anyway, take my word for it. Okay, so you can see that it was really difficult coming up with semantic terms to represent the semantic distance from every one place in here to every other item, both as it broke down into its individual pieces spatially and also as it related to everything else laterally and every other family and position in the entire model. That took a year and a half, a year and a half, just to work out the words. And there weren't enough in the English language because we don't look that deeply into things normally. So some we had to invent on our own, others we had to retask. In the end, we managed to get a complete chart of semantics that represented these processes of the mind held as variables in the iterative equations. That's all the time I've got. We'll be back again with part four soon.